In today's video, I want to talk about AlexNet. I've been rereading the seminal paper by Alex Krivzewski and I found that uh, there were many small interesting bits of information in the methodology. For this video, we will follow the paper structure. If we run, rewind back to uh, before 2012, uh, most datasets for computer vision were small and specialized. For instance, the NORB dataset uh, contains only 50 toys uh, image. During that time, as compute resources became cheaper, models with higher capacity become trainable. This incentive people to create bigger datasets like LabelMe and ImageNet. So uh, LabelMe is a community contributed dataset coupled with an open annotation tool. So ImageNet is a huge set of image arranged in a structure hierarchy uh, following the WarNet uh, hierarchy uh, crowdsourced on Amazon Mechanical Turk. So having dataset that big require a model with large capacities like deep neural network and convolutional neural network are especially well suited for this uh, image recognition task because of the assumption built in the network that resemble kind of the visual system of the human brain. If we take a closer look at ImageNet, we see that it has in total 15 million image with label. This was an enormous amount at the time. We can see here that the hierarchy uh, I was talking about earlier. So uh, on the top we have mammal, and then placental, and then carnivore, canine, dog, working dog, and then finally husky. Um, so uh, same thing for vehicle down there until Chimaran. With the dataset, there is an annual competition called ImageNet Large Scale Visual Recognition Channels that happen every year. So the year that AlexNet won the competition, we can see that there was a significant gain provided by the network. And the methodology that Alex uh, and uh, Jeff Inton uh, used. So this is almost like a 10% um, reduction in error. So uh, although the, the image themselves are high resolution, uh, they were reduced by f to a fixed 256 times 256 pixel resolution in order to reduce uh, the size uh, required uh, for the network. So let's take a look at the architecture now. Um, here is the figure from the paper with some annotation. It's a bit weird and uh, very loaded, so we'll step through it uh, slowly. Um, it's the, the picture seems cut at the top, but uh, strangely enough, this is how it was in the original paper. The first thing to note is that the activation function uh, they used was a ReLU instead of the sigmoid or Tanesh that were commonly um, in use. So ReLU was used throughout network. So ReLU looks like the image on the left. It's a very simple function that is uh, differentiable everywhere except at zero. Um, the rational for using uh, this kind of activation function is that they learn faster than sigmoid or tanesh function. So um, on the right, uh, you can see that the, there's two lines. The solid line is um, the, uh, the training error of the ReLU function, uh, a, a network using ReLU function um, across epoch and then the dashed line is damage and we can see that the ReLU is like six times uh, faster for this, this network and in, in, in general it's, it's way faster. So one novel thing the author did at the time was that they train on multiple GPUs, so here too, um, in order to increase the size of the network so um, the, the, the GPU uh, at the time um, had uh, 3 GB of, of memory um, so this was kind of a, a limiting factor for the size uh, of the network. So they used two of them, and this is why you see that the network is kind of split in two. So another net trick that they, they use, uh, that is biologically inspired, um, is to use the local response normalization, also called a brightness normalization. So this is a process that is similar to what is happening in the retina. If you want to leave, learn more about it, I, I did a full video on that. Uh, because it's super interesting. So AlexNet has another um, particularity. It used overlapping pooling instead of the traditional non-overlapping pooling uh, for the convolution. So overlapping pooling is like having like overlapping receptive field um, uh, across neuron, as shown at the bottom of this picture. Uh, they find that this method could reduce uh, error rate by about 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 uh, percent. They also report less overfitting uh, with this strategy. 
So let's look back at the architecture, knowing the previous uh, information. So the first thing to note here is that some layer are in GPU one, and some layer are in GPU two. There are also like inter GPU connection at specific point, and intra GPU connection uh, at others. So this is like a very very um, specific, uh, specifically wired uh, network. So the input layer here is a 224 by 224. Uh, this is a bit odd since we've stated that uh, they shrank the image uh, to be 256. Um, but this is due by the data augmentation scheme they used, uh, which we'll see uh, in a few. So the first five layer are all convolution uh, layer. Last three are fully connected uh, feed forward layer, ending with a thousand ways softmax because there are a thousand category in the subset of uh, ImageNet that they used. So the connection intra GPU uh, are constrained to layer two, uh, four, and five. So those are within uh, the convolution uh, layer. Um, and uh, in the paper, they show that uh, the, because of this, the GPU one and GPU two are learning different representation. I believe that one of them is more um, is more attuned to uh, colors, and the other one uh, is kind of color uh, free. So the inter GPU uh, connection are in the third covenant layer and in the fully connected layer at the end uh, completely. So layer three is doing a lot of um, information passing across GPU. And after that, in the fully connected layer, um, they are pulling everything together. So like in the retina, a response normalization happen only in the first layers um, uh, after the input has entered the system. So in this case, it's uh, layer one and two. And I found it quite interesting that they, they kept uh, kind of this um, um, this fact in the architecture. So here the max pooling that you see is uh, the overlapping uh, max pooling um, that, they, that they did. It happened at layer 2, 3 and 6. So an interesting thing to keep in mind here is that this network wasn't originally made with a well-maintained uh, neural network library like PyTorch TensorFlow. It's, it's mostly custom CSC++ that Alex has uh, worked on specifically, specifically for this network. Uh, it's pretty, pretty impressive because of the, the way the, the connections are made across GPU. Um, and in the paper, you can see that there's a link to um, the, the C++ code. I'm going to put it in the description. It's kind of it's nice to see. So the other used uh, additional trick in order to avoid that their network um, uh, overfit the data, uh, because if, if you didn't, don't do these tricks, you, you the, this network will overfit. So the first one is to use data augmentation uh, with translation and horizontal reflection like we see in the cat uh, image down there. The second one um, is a bit weird, uh, is to alter the image pixel intensity by using PCA. So um, they, they did PCA on the whole ImageNet uh, training data set. Um, that and then what they do is they add multiple of the principal component multiply by a random variable uh, from a Gaussian uh, distribution. So this is the alpha that you uh, you see. Um, they did this to add a prior that the object identity is invariant to change in intensity or color of the illumination. Um, so th this way they could augment the, the data set, but they also uh, varied the intensity um, of the pixel uh, just just to, to, to remove this information uh, for the network as relevant. Uh, the last trick that they used, which is super important um, to reduce uh, overfitting, is, is dropout. So dropout is kind of a cheap way of, of kind of doing Ansible training in deep neural network. Um, so what you do is uh, you, every neuron except the input have a 0.5% chance of uh, getting shut down uh, so that they're not, not um, doing anything for this round of training. Um, so if you, this is as if you're training a multiple uh, network. So if you see here, uh, we have a fully connected neural network in A and then we do dropout. So um, we have a sparser network in B and then we train for some batch and then we redo it. So uh, an, another set of neuron will be will be uh, killed out this reduce um, the the interdependence between uh, the neuron and make the 
the network at whole, as a whole a bit more flexible. So this is important. Without this trick, the network will overfit badly. Finally, they train uh, using a batch stochastic gradient descent optimizer uh, with momentum. So you can check out my video on the subject uh, where, where I go through the formula and I code um, uh, SGD plus momentum from scratch. It's not too complicated. So let's check out the quantitative result, which at the time were uh, astounding. So here we compare the two um, runner up. Uh, so sparse coding in SIFT plus uh, FV uh, with the CNN made by Alex. Uh, the top one means that you get the label exactly right. Uh, so it's, it, you, it's the, the label with the most probable, um, with the highest, highest probability. And the top five means that the label that is correct is within the five most probable output by your model. So they use top one and top five error um, in order to better characterize like the performance of your classifier. As we can see, Alex is way below the two runner up by a lot which which is great because this is top one error and top five error um, this is for the 2010 competition though so let's look at the 2012 so here um, like I said they also entered the 2012 competition since the paper was published at the same time they didn't have the test results yet um, so they, they used the validation set as a benchmark and they said that um, it's like 0 0.1 difference between the two uh, between the, the validation and test set, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so the network achieved 18.2% uh, 8, top 5 um, error. So this is like 8% below the the, the runner-up. So if you see here, you have, you have 5 CNNs. They also tried um, using Ansible uh, of, of similar train network, um, and they got even better um, results. I did some more explore, experimentation with pre-training on 2001 release of ImageNet, but uh, it's not that important. The main point there is that the network is very good, and there is room for more um, for more improvement by uh, by having bigger network. So let's look at the qualitative uh, result now, uh, which are very interesting uh, to check what the network learned. So if we look on the left panel, we can see that. Um, the five top label for each image and um, it's, it's pretty interesting the network is pretty good uh, but we also realize that some of the the error it may happen on very ambiguous image so for in instance the cherry image um, there's a huge Dalmatian in top in there uh, yes the cherry is, is in front but like um, if I was to say what this thing was I would have said like Dalmatian in it in a cherry, I don't know. Um, you see here uh, uh, on the left, uh, we have uh, gri. Um, I will have said car. That's it. Uh, but it was it was a convertible, so I will have actually got this uh, wrong. Um, but they all make sense. So, for example, the might on top right, uh, top left, um, it said might black widow cockroach tick starfish. Um, they kind of all make sense. So. It seems that the network actually like is learning um, a deeper representation. So if we look at the right panel, we see that we see the image that leads to the most similar feature activation on the last fully connected layer. So they look at the the, the activation of the neuron um, on the last layer to know if the image, um, if different image are are, are kind of uh, doing the same reaction on, on the network, and uh, for each row. You can actually see that it's pretty, it's pretty consistent that um, the network seems to understand what it's it's looking at. Uh, for example, the elephant, they are all in different paws, but still, it knows that it's a, um, it's an elephant. Like it, it, it kind of understand uh, the the network is configured to kind of do the same reaction, so output the same labels, um, for for these kind. Of, of images which is pretty neat so that's it for today's video i hope that you enjoyed it so after reading this paper it made me realize all the complexity that uh, went into um, arriving to the result that cnn are good at object recognition um, 
For instance, if they didn't do the data augmentation, it would just have overfit and then no one would have went further. Um, but um, they used a lot of tricks to make this thing work. Um, and sometimes I, I feel that uh, it's kind of overlooked. Um, so yeah, a lot of the tricks were crucial in order to both avoid overfitting and get better results uh, at object recognition. And these uh, results compounded. So um, yeah, anyway, if you have a comment or question, don't hesitate to post them down below. And like always, uh, have a great week.